the sabers. Yeah, it tastes like purple. Yeah, you've never even seen Greg the Bunny. You just repeat that quote because I say it. There have been many things that you've told me to look up on YouTube, and I look them up, and I sometimes question their friendship. <laughs> I'm like, this. Well, I've never seen Goodfellas. It's funny. You're a funny guy. <laughs> Wait, wait, what's that? Back to Still back. friends. <laughs> I have a topic. You do? Yeah, I do. Sure? Yeah, positive. For those of you who are looking to win autographed Bills merch, hit up the... That's the Sabres. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's an autographed Trey White Goalie Academy helmet. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> but so, I don't know how to do promos. <laughs> <laughs> Go down into the description. There's a link to enter for the autographed Trey White Goalie Academy uh, goalie helmet. Go down, get into. There's only a few days left. Uh, the winning, or the winner is going to be drawn uh, the day of the Pro Bowl at yep. kickoff. So get in now. The only thing you're only ever going to see this once. It's a one of a kind item. The Bills are not making this. The Sabres are not making this. Trey White had never seen one when he had him sign it before. So this is a unique item. You want to get your hands on it? Go enter now. It's free to enter. Bills Mafia is losing their mind over the players available in the draft. I don't want to talk about specific players. Okay, let's make let's make this real clear. Gotcha. I don't want to talk about specific players. I want to talk about the position as a whole, right? Bills Mafia is losing their mind about all the wide receivers available in this draft. Yes. This, people are saying it's a very deep wide receiver class. Because the Bills are drafting late, normally when people say, well, it's very deep, then people feel like they're going to get a top five pick in the 21st position of the draft, which, I mean, is not going to happen, but that's how people feel. So my question to you is, what's the viability of the Bills actually drafting a first-round wide receiver in the upcoming draft class? I'm super curious about this because people say deep wide receiver class, normally they feel like a top 10 pick is going to be there at 24. I mean, that's not how the NFL works. <clears throat> how was the wide receiver class last year? It was, I mean, from first round players? Mm -hmm. I mean, here's the deal. Your most impactful players in the last couple of years have been second and third round picks at the wide receiver position. What I'm saying is that you had, <clears throat> you had guys like, our Sia Whiteside. Yep. You had um, Nikhil Harry, mm -hmm. DK Metcalf. Yep. Uh, second round, or does DK second round pick? Yes. Last pick of the second round. So you had guys that were, you had a deep wide receiver class. Mm -hmm. What did the Buffalo Bills do? Went after two veterans and signed right. them both. So, so their priority, if you think about it in the short term, is not that. Right. And what else did they do? They went to the CFL to get a wide receiver. Funny stat for you. Last year, there were two positions in the last year's draft. There were two positions that were drafted more than wide receiver. What were they? In 2018, there were two positions drafted more. In what 2018, were there were two positions drafted more than wide receivers. Yep. What were they? I'm going to go with corner and offensive line. Corner, correct. 32 corners to 28 wide receivers. I know, one per team. Every team walked away with a corner, basically. And every team walked away with a linebacker. Linebackers were at 31. Wow, nickel, man. They're running that big nickel, man. They're running that big nickel. So your first round wide receivers. It's a scroll. So you're saying Marquise that... Marquise Brown was your first, your only first round wide receiver, if my memory serves me correct. Well, that's... that's and Akeel the, Harry went 32. <clears throat> well, that's been the narrative, Ball. We've talked about yeah, it for quite it a bit. It, aside from the Mike Evans draft, 2014. Right. Receivers that come into this, the, because they run so many spread concepts in college, mm -hmm. and the, a lot of the verbiage really isn't transferred over. True, a lot of more, a lot more college coaches are ending up in the NFL, so that yeah. transfer could be better. Brian Dable's not one of them. No, he is not. So, and the system that he runs is not is not heavily a predicated. At all. Yeah, it's not heavily predicated on having a stud number one wideout. However, that system. You have seen what it does when you have a number one in Randy Moss. Mm -hmm. You go 16 and 0. Yeah. And you're able to help Matt Castle get 11 wins the following year. Right. Kind of but so, the question becomes when was the last time you saw a drafted receiver in year one become a number one? Aside from that 
Aside from 2014. 2014. Aside from 2014. I think we, I think it's fair to, to to mention who was that who that was. That was Mike Evans. It was OBJ. Yeah. Watkins. Yep. Uh, Calvin Benjamin. Calvin Benjamin. Oh God. Yeah. I just Benjamin killed my own argument, there. didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they're not all winners. Well, I mean, and then that that, that in, in lies the the other discussion. If being as we talked about before, had such a heavily heavy influence in what Carolina did. They draft Starla Tulele in the first round. The next year they draft Calvin Benjamin. Right. Who did they draft last well, year? Well, at Oliver. Oliver. Okay, I, I see that. I mean, the, the parallels are. Well, I are think there I, if you no, want you're look right. But there is a parallel there. But you know, I think a lot of Bills fans are fearful of trading up for a wide receiver because the Bills sold the house to get Sammy Watkins at a deep wide receiver class. Right. That I don't year, even pay attention to that. No. And neither do you. Well, I'm just. Why would I'm, you? I'm talking about the narrative among Bills fans because the last time the wide receiver class was this deep, the Bills traded up for a wide receiver, and you got and they guessed wrong. I'm well aware, in that, in that and respect. they did. But you got to remember, there's a lot of factors that go into that, and you recall all of these. But I'm just gonna, mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna alert the nation because if you're fearful about the Bills trading up, remember, Bills didn't have ownership at that time. No, that's okay? right. You're Ralph right. Wilson had passed away. There was no ownership of the team. Yep. Doug Whaley was your GM. Mm-hmm. Total different regime. He was proving that he can go make take risks, go get his guys because right. he was the only guy running. Him and Russ Brandon were running a company right. and the store, and the Bills were effectively, you know, had a reputation of being a lame franchise with not being able to do any, not being able to move anybody, yep. not being able to move in yep. the drafts. Not, so he decided to go up for the, at the time, arguably the most explosive offensive player that was in the, yeah, in the I draft. I agree with that. I All agree right? with that. No, I mean, and, and we start to see if that doesn't give you a hint of what happens to Bill's offensive players when they come to Buffalo. Because we talked about on the Sportscaster um, Sportscaster stream, what if Mahomes came here? Mm-hmm. You know, everyone thinks he, he wouldn't have thrown 50 here. Hold on. Can we switch this to the front camera real fast? Like, this is things the out-of-towners are never going to see. So, for those of you who miss local commercials, I suppose we'll give you one. This right. drives around my neighborhood every now and again. Uh, the plumber, westernnewyork.com. In case you want to see somebody in the back of a van sitting on a toilet, on a porcelain god. Who wears sandals this time of year? <laughs> That's what you put up. <laughs> so you had all that. You had all that wide receiver talent. They just they just missed around. But, but the Buffalo Bills have ruined a lot of talent in that in that in the interim. Well, and again, ruined is. I mean, you have to take you didn't that expose, with a grain of salt. You didn't, you didn't fully get Sammy Watkins' value. But then, if you think about it, he was the most explosive player. He goes to Andy Reid, and he's still not putting up gaudy numbers. Right. So what really is the right. determining factor? Yeah. But as far as that, you want to look at that Bills team that traded up versus this Bills team that might trade up for a wideout. I don't even put any stock in that because it's two different – it's the same franchise. That's the only thing that's the it's same. The same hel- it's not even the same helmet anymore. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would I be fearful? Okay, what are you giving up? That's all I'm concerned about. Right. Do you give up a fourth? Do you give up a fifth? Well, well how Buffalo- far are you climbing? Because your bills are at 22nd. They're picking 22nd. How far are you climbing? We've seen what, you know what, you know what it took to get to the top 10 last time we saw this? We t- talked about it on Sportscaster. Future first pick. Future first. You're, t- you're climbing 12 spots. To get into the, into the top ten, do you want to give up another few? Do you want to give up do another? Do you have any first assets as far as players? Well, let me ask this, right? If I told you you're going to give up the 22nd overall pick in this year's draft, and you're going to give up the 30th overall pick in next year's draft to go up and get a wide receiver, yeah, do you do it? Yeah. Why? Because you're in the AFC Championship game. Yeah, that's right. That's that's right. Exactly. That shows that what you did paid off. Whatever it was you did. You got to finish higher. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you um, only trade a future first if you're convinced that that future first is of significantly less value than the pick that you already have. Yes. And that, it's not a quarterback. So it's not, right. you're not trading a future first right. for a quarterback where he's got a learning curve, mm-hmm. where you, you're giving up a valuable asset next year, too. I right. know first round picks a valuable asset. I understand that. It but is. Bean has been able to work. The reason why I don't like that is because he has proven that some of the late round picks that he has have been contributors. Uh-huh. Now that the Bills are winning, they went ten and six. His contributors are productive 
players now. Right. So if Bean was going to go from, let's say, 22 to 15, because mm -hmm. there's somebody still on the board, but he had to give up a fourth and a fifth, we've seen fourth and fifth round picks that have played for the Bills and been productive. Right. So you're essentially giving up three players that Bean and his staff could scout. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what, is that one player worth three? I don't know. Well, and I look at it this way, right? I see a deep wide receiver class. That's what I hear people say, right? And I lick my lips as somebody who loves the draft because what does that mean? Bills yes. are sitting at 22nd. I'm thrilled there's a deep wide receiver class in an offensive position because that means teams are going to be aggressive and they're going to slide up, right? So if teams slide up, what does that mean? The talent I want slides down, right? I could be looking at the second best offensive tackle in the draft. I could be looking at the second best guard in the draft. I could be looking at the first best safety in the draft. I could be looking at the third best corner in the draft. Mm -hmm. I could be like, there's. I could be still be looking at the best running back in the class. I mean, there's no running back. The best running back in college just decided he's going to stay in, stay stay for a senior season. Yep. So you start looking at how a deep wide receiver class impacts the rest of the draft class. And if you're sitting late. You love the fact that people are like, oh, this is a generational class. Great. They're Go fighting get over them. each other. Yeah. Go get them. Even though it's a position of need for us, right? It is. Admittedly, mm -hmm. wide receiver is a position of need. Where does that put us this upcoming season? Where does it put us next season? Is it a priority? Is it really a priority? Do you have other needs that you, that you want to take advantage of? I, I think it's a fair question to ask because, I mean, there's a lot going on in this draft class. Here's what gets me about it, about the draft class. Number one, <clears throat> we've seen wide receivers who come in and have an adjustment period. Yeah. And it's tough. The learning curve is tough. Yeah. Number two, the Buffalo Bills decided to go with veterans. Mm -hmm. All right? They decided to go with veterans last year instead of draft, which they could have they could have very well drafted wide receivers mm -hmm. in this draft class. Um. Number three, John Brown actually having the statement of, this is the most complex offense and hardest to learn. Yeah. And this is a guy that played for Bruce Arians. He's been in the league for like six, what, six years? Yeah. Okay. Number one, the learning curve's already steep. And then you come into a Brian Dable offense as a rookie and are expected to... You're, you're, you're hitting exactly what I'm concerned about, right? This doesn't yeah. scream draft a rookie wide receiver to me. Now, does the offense that kid's playing in college, is it, is it comparable? Number two, how fast can he pick it up? Mm -hmm. Because we remember way back, and the, the most immediate name that's going to come to everyone's mind is Jerry Judy. Because in 2017, him and Dable were both at Bama. Right. So that's the only guy right this minute off the top of my head that I know that have any kind of crossover between what Dable wants to run and mm -hmm. or, I mean, you, you look at Foster. Foster, mm -hmm. he played with Dable. Mm-hmm. He wasn't a first-round pick. He was undrafted. <clears throat> he had trouble picking it up. Sometimes. Still has trouble. Still has trouble. Yeah. So maybe Judy is one of those guys that can pick it up. Maybe he can't. But there is that connection. Okay, right. Dave was like, hey, we need this offense to be better than scoring 20 points a game next year. Well, give me right. Judy. Do whatever you need to get me Judy. Right. And I'm not saying that they're going to do that. That's just the first thing that popped in my head because they were both at Bama in 17. Right. I think it's an interesting argument to make because right now it's one of those things that we don't know how it's going to go, right? We don't, we no, don't know. We're, nobody months, does. we're months away from the draft at this point. Um, but there's, I think there's an argument to be made on both sides here. The bills could use a wide, could use a dynamic young wide receiver. I agree that a number one yes. in this offense would make a big difference. The question becomes how do the bills procure that? Well, is that via free agency? Do they go get, Somebody and just pay for two years of A.J. Green, who is just a gamble. I mean, admittedly, A.J. Green's a gamble, right? Do you draft somebody and expect them to be not productive for the first year or two and throw them into a system like this? Like, it's a complicated system. So, yeah. you know, there's there's a lot to be said for what you're going to do. And just because it's a deep wide receiver class doesn't mean it's a deep wide receiver class for the Bills. I think a name that's also that fits – in a nice little box, mm -hmm. hand deliver it to Buffalo, who would be a productive player. Now, I'm talking about just simply from on the field. Okay. Amari Cooper. Now, okay. I know what you're thinking right now. Okay. Exactly. I know what you're thinking uh -huh. because I'm. Just, that's why I said it had, it had to compartmentalize it. And on the field, you put a three-wide set with Brown, Beasley, and Amari Cooper, there's no more excuses for anyone. No. Alan yeah, Dable or whatever. Right. That's one. Two is this. 
the amount of money it would take to sign Cooper would annoy a vast majority of the roster that's been here earning what they're earning. Yeah. Poirier, you can guarantee, would be a holdout. Yeah. Other guys would be like, whoa, he's paying this guy all this money? What's going on? Yeah. And one of the other things, because you would have to clear. Number one, you got to clear, because he would want at least a five-year deal. You would have to clear cap with other players that have been staples of your locker room. And you don't know how this kid is in the locker room. You don't know how Cooper is. You don't know what he can do. He's not a boisterous, outgoing guy like everyone, like like a, like a Antonio Brown, OBJ, or anything like that. But on the field, no question. Off the field and how it affects your team, I think that would be a huge hit. So that's why I brought up somebody like A.J. Green, because you could bring A.J. Green on a two-year, $18 million deal, and everybody goes, okay, well, it's not long-term. The money's not – money's great for, He's for us. Veteran. He's a veteran. He's a veteran. You're you're just picking up the last couple of years of his of his you know you're just picking up the last couple of years of what's out there so mm-hmm. okay and just remind know. everybody Amari Cooper did go to Bama but there's no connection between him and Dave right in that yeah, respect yeah they, they he was gone before Dave he came would just in. call Saban up be like hey what do you think of Amari is he worth put, spending it no uh, well <laughs> so the just at, just from the financial end spot track right now because Cooper's coming off. A twenty million dollar deal, I think it was for year twenty. It wasn't. That's all he had. Yeah, it wasn't much. Market value five years, ninety eight million dollars for a six one two hundred pound wide out that has proven. Now, if you want to talk about a twenty six year old Julio Jones, yeah, you go spend that money. You spend that money. There's no, there's no guy like that on the on the market. No, there isn't. Was he six three? Six four, he's monster. Who Julio? Julio? Yeah, he's big. I only make the Bama connection because I know. I know yeah, no, big. yeah, yeah. Let's keep talking about Alabama wide receivers. I love it. It's, what the, a great idea! The amount of running backs that came out of Alabama. We talk about wide, wide receivers. receivers from I Alabama. know. Well, hey, the uh, Bills need one. If it's Julio, yes, I'd make that deal. No, and just to dispel every. Atlanta's not getting rid of Julio. No, 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 no. Okay. They can't afford. They to. can't afford to get rid of him. <laughs> they can't, can't, can't cut him. That contract is just brutal. Yeah, these in concrete. He's got concrete shoes in Alabama or in in Atlanta. See? You got it. All right, All right. If you're going on history, yeah, the Buffalo Bills will try to procure talent in free agency prior to the draft to cover their to cover themselves. Right. If they can't get the guy they want in the draft, we've seen them do that for three years now. Yep, it's pretty constant. So uh, if they do that, you can either bank that the guy's going to play and they're not going to draft anybody. They may trade out of that pick to acquire more for wide receivers next year. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, they may just take BPA. Best player available? Mm-hmm. Well, and again, best player available sitting at 22 when people are going to be jumping up. You might see four wide receivers off the board by the time it gets to Buffalo. Great thing is that pushes three position players further down. Plus, we have to see if... Free agency happens before the draft. Yeah. If Lawson and Phillips are both gone, there's your holes. A, right. a D tackle might get pushed to you. Right. And plus you're you overlapping those plus guys. Plus you lost Zoe. Yeah. Like there's... Well, you have Vic Beasley. So. You're not having Vic Beasley. I cannot wait to shove this in your face two months from now. If he if he makes the bills. Oh, God, I don't even want to talk about it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, bet? Bet. All right. What is it? Let's go. I'm Vic really behind Beasley. the eight ball, so I got to have amazing odds here. Yeah, I yeah. have to have amazing odds. Okay, Vic Beasley. If Vic bills. Beasley is a bill, if it, Vic Beasley isn't a bill, my punishment can't be as worse as yours. What? It's such a long shot. You've been pretty boisterous about this one, but it's still a long shot. It is a long shot, but that doesn't matter. You're, it's. I'm you're, sipping the Star Latula Le Coolie. You are. It tasted good. <laughs> it tasted so good. Yeah. All right, so if punishment. Vic Beasley. Is on 31 other teams, you win the bet. If he yeah. comes to the Bills, I win the bet. Yeah. If he if he makes the Bills roster, if he comes to the Bills, you have to um, you have to interview, and I'll film it. You have to interview people um, wearing a Patriots jersey. No way, I'm not doing the Patriots jersey again. No, nope, you got me once. I here's what I'll do. Okay. You ready? I will drink a bottle of ranch. Drink? I'll drink the whole bottle of ranch. I don't want to do that to you at all. I'll drink the whole bottle of ranch. No, and it's scary because you would make me do that. I would make you do that. I I say I would tell you to drink a whole bottle of maple syrup. Super trooper style. Oh, my God. 
I could feel myself, my blood sugar rising. Yeah. Hey, this is the this is the price of poker. This is the price of poker. I would go. I see. I would go movie punishments. Super Trooper. God drink. God drink maple syrup. Okay. If I lose, I have to chug a bottle of maple syrup. Yeah. If you lose, you have to eat Duff's hot wings. Oh my God, you dude! And I'm just letting right, know he right, can't eat anything fair. hot. He has I to have mild. I can't eat even medium no. on a. Oh my God! How many wings? Five. Okay, five. Five's reasonable. Five doable. Five's reasonable. Okay, can, I'll can do. I, can I not? Can I get the? Do I have to get the extra big inch of my one? Can <laughs> no. I just get like a small one? You can just get a small one. It's fine. It's All right, fine. so that's the bet. Yep, that's it. Lock it in. This episode took a deep turn. Yeah. <laughs>